So kind of the first uh, like idea generation or thought process about the Vario started um, really kind of overlapping the the end of the development of our Ventus hoodie um, and early on to that kind of release to the public um, where, you know, we knew what the, what the Ventus was and we were really happy with that type of insulation. It's the, the three DFS, the three DFX synthetic insulation. Um, we were really happy with it. Um, how, how warm it is for how thin it is. Um, it's, it's stretching ability and how well it works in an active, uh, type piece. Um, and I, I guess we kind of, there's a few things that kind of occurred simultaneously or overlapping, but one was, you know, uh, being so happy with that insulation, kind of having the question in our minds, well, what if we did something with, you know, a bit more of that same type of insulation, like what, what would that piece look like and how would that perform? And, and we kind of had an idea in our minds of like where we could position that jacket and how we could apply it to our, our own clothing systems. Um, just knowing how, how warm the Ventus is for its weight. Um, the wheels just started turning in, in my head about, well, if I, if I just increase the, the insulation by let's say 60% uh, or so, then I had a pretty good idea that that was going to turn out to be a really warm jacket for not a lot of weight increase. Um, we also had, um, you know, with, with the popularity and, and how well received the Ventus hoodie was, we had a lot of people kind of making comments about like, well, sure be nice if there was a full zipper or it sure be nice if there were pockets. And, um, you know, the Ventus was intended to be very, very minimalist. Um, but while we're having these thoughts about, you know, making a warmer insulation with the same 3 the same 3 dfx um started to piece together things that kind of seemed to make sense and uh so i guess the the concept came to make a more of a a a jacket you know not just something that would be like for mild temperatures or as a mid-layer but a full-on jacket that would uh, would, would uh, um, occupy or take the or have the same application as what people typically use, like your your puffy your your down puffy jacket for kind of the typical sweater weight puffy. Um, <clears throat> kind of had that that concept in mind that we could take um, this insulation, use a little bit warmer or thicker um, 3DFX 3DFX insulation, use the same fabric as the Ventus, and kind of use that same uh, call it platform. Um, and kind of come up with a, that jacket that's going to uh, take the place of a, a three season puffy and actually maybe even be like really competitive or really similar in weight. Typically, a, you know, a synthetic insulation jacket is going to weigh a little bit more than down. That's pretty standard. Um, but having so much experience uh, testing and researching the 3DFX insulation, um, in the Ventus hoodie, which is a, a lighter weight, thinner insulation, um, we had a lot of confidence that we could come up with a jacket that would, would, uh, be just as warm as, you know, some of these down insulated pieces. Um, so those are kind of the two major things is, uh, wanting to add some of those, uh, those features that people were maybe requesting zippers and pockets. Um, but then, you know, making it its own piece, uh, making it a, a standout piece that um, really served a, a solid purpose for, for like year round, really. Uh, we wouldn't want it to just be so limited to just one or two seasons. Designing the Vario, it was a pretty straightforward and uh, streamlined process. Um, we actually were able to kind of start with like the base design of the Ventus hoodie um, and then just start by adding a full zipper and pockets. Um, but then we would get, we got that prototype and we tested it out and we wore it and it obviously has a, a thicker insulation in it. 
Um, and we knew that was like definitely the right direction just with that first prototype. Um, but the use case or the application is different. And so we knew that we needed to tweak the fit, um, especially to start accommodating more layers underneath it. Um, we knew we needed to, yeah, just basically have a little bit more room in the jacket everywhere, whether that's the arms, the neck, the, ch the chest, the, the, you know, the mid torso, the hem, basically just dialing in exactly the right amount of room everywhere in the jacket. And we did that through several iterations of prototypes. Uh, we, we would make a tweak here. We would um, add some, add some room here and there and, and uh, test it out and just go back and make another one and another one. Um, and uh, we, we, we uh, kind of tweaked uh, zippers a little bit uh, in terms of one that would, you know, flex with the jacket a little bit better and, and kind of be more malleable. Um, yeah, a lot of that, you know, tweaking is all related to fit, which, which is one of the most critical components of like a technical piece um, is how it fits. If, if to, to have something perform the way we want it to perform, it has to fit right. Um, and then, uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's really kind of the process. Um, several iterations of prototypes and then dialing things in, um, having many different people uh, try them on, test them out. Um, and we, we, we got them out to some, some product testers that, that we, that we trust, that we know that we have, have done a lot of testing for us before. Um, and that we, 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 we trust their feedback. And, uh, once we had, you know, positive feedback from all directions, um, you know, we, we knew it was ready. And, then, and again, a lot of that, that knowing that it's ready comes from the external feedback and our own internal confidence in the product because of all the time we've spent in the field with it um, and really proving it out. Uh, I would say, I mentioned before, the use case for this jacket is not to be the one jacket that you put on when it's minus 10 degrees outside. That's the jacket's inadequate for that. However, the design objective for this jacket is that it can still have an application in that temperature range um, and function really well. But then in more moderate or mild temperatures, say 30 degrees or 20 degrees uh, or 40 degrees, it absolutely can be a standalone jacket. And that was just all proven out through our own internal testing and just getting it into as many environments as possible. And like I said, once we had just all positive feedback from all directions, then we knew it was ready. We can start with, you know, what's on the inside. So we, the, we use a, a 3DFX um, active stretch insulation um, that is 50% recycled. And then we use um, a 20D nylon inner fabric and a 20D nylon outer fabric. The inner fabric is is uh, a, a really soft hand and uh, just got a really soft feel to it. The outer fabric is a little bit more um, shell-like or it's got more of a coating on it to be more wind and water resistant and abrasion resistant. Um, we've got a hem adjustment at the bottom so you can really cinch it up to kind of close out any drafts you may get from the hem, the bottom of the jacket. Uh, we still have the perforated underarm vents um, uh, on the Vario. However, because the Vario is intended to be more of a, an insulating piece, uh, more focus on being a jacket that keeps you warm when you're uh, stationary, um, the perforated ventilation on the underarms is a, is a smaller surface area, um, but we still wanted to have that ventilation. Um, it's a full, you know, full zipper, YKK zipper, um, and then we put these uh, like the hidden hidden zippers on the sides for, for the hands to go into. Um, and that really kind of helps with a couple things. Um, it keeps it really clean on those sides. Um, think about when you're wearing a backpack, your shoulder straps and your hip belt kind of are constantly in contact with that area. And by keeping the, by using hidden zippers 
it really helps the comfort and just prevents snagging and catching on, on other pieces of gear. Um, and then we've got kind of the same, the same hood, really anatomically shaped hood that doesn't require any adjustment, uh, yet it can still stay uh, fitted to the user's head as they move their head from side to side um, and maintain that really good fit. Um, I will say the, the Vario, it, it does, it is cut or it does have a fit that allows uh, layering underneath it, more substantial layering. Um, and um, yeah, I think that's kind of the, that's basically the, the feature set of the Vario jacket. You know, 3DFX insulation, um, we're, we've been really happy with it with the Ventus hoodie and it uses a combination of different thicknesses of, of polyester fibers um, that are coiled, um, but they're coiled randomly. So each little fiber, you know, that makes up this sheet of lofted insulation, they're, dif they're different thicknesses and they're, they've got different crimps and coils. And so this randomness just creates um, a, a bunch of loft for a very low amount of, of fiber weight. Um, but it also, because of the coiled nature of all these fibers, um, when they're at rest, um, they have all this room to stretch. And so when, say, you bend an elbow or reach forward or reach up, um, the insulation, it stretches, but because it has such a coil nature to the fibers, like if you were to look at it under a microscope, when it stretches, it still maintains its loft. So this sheet of insulation can like take a 90 degree turn with a stretch and an elbow through it and still maintain loft because it's so, it's just so distorted and, and kind of coiled up at its resting position that when it does stretch out, it still, it still provides insulation value. So that's one of the cool things and one of the things that we've been really happy with, but uh, you know, we wanted to increase the warmth and when we started talking to um, Torre, who is who makes the the 3DFX insulation for us, um, they asked us, you know, um, if we'd be interested in trying um, a, a recycled insulation. And and our stance has always been with recycled insulation um, is that we're not willing to basically take a performance hit. Um, just to have recycled insulation. And, and, and we actually have a really good relationship with Torre on this because their, their philosophy on recycled product is that it's not necessarily this uh, instant stamp of sustainability that um, just earns this, this stamp of approval as a sustainable product because many uh, recycled products out there um, are actually substantially less durable, less performing, and have a, have a less, or they have a shorter lifespan. Um, and so it doesn't necessarily just net out into this, this uh, less waste. Um, it doesn't mean that it can't, but that's just something as a, as a company we have to be really careful about and that we're we're not willing to sacrifice performance or durability or any measure of performance or function um, just to have a recycled uh, material, whether that's a fabric or an insulation. And so we, we gave them you know, our, our feedback on that and uh, they were really happy with that and they kind of have the same philosophy of, of you know, we can really um, extend the life of things if we're careful about how they're made. And so they, uh, we basically, you know, told them, well, we, we need you to uh, do, do, the, do the homework and, and, and look into, you know, if there's going to be any kind of performance loss compared to what we already use. And so they, they did. They, they went to, you know, all their, their engineers, their technical people that, that do all this. And um, it took a few months, but... Um, basically they were able to test and confirm that by using a 50% recycled 3DFX insulation, 
um, that there was zero performance loss compared to uh, a non-recycled insulation of the same design, right? Um, and so we were really excited about that. And that's actually very uncommon. Um, let me rephrase that. That's actually not very common in the industry, especially in fabrics, textiles, insulations. Um, that's not common that you'll have a recycled material that has the same performance and function and durability and lifespan as a non-recycled. And how they're able to do that, um, Torre is, um, they're a chemistry company. Um, so they start, their business is, begins at the fiber level. Um, think of it as the, the chemistry level, the chemistry level. So they make all kinds of fibers and they use them in all different kinds of applications. Um, and so they're very vertically oriented and they like to keep everything in house. So if they're gonna make a fiber, they're gonna make the next product that is made from that fiber and the next product that's made from that yarn. Um, and so they started recycling their own um, basically waste or, you know, the think of it in terms of like if you were to take a sheet of paper and cut out a circle. Well, everything that's left is not a circle, so it's not usable if you're looking for circles. And so it just goes to the waste bin. Well, then they take that waste and they recycle that. So they're able to, using their own product that they're making, recycle the waste of their own product. Um, a lot of recycled, uh, especially fabrics, a lot of recycled fabrics and insulations out there, they're sourcing basically trash from the globe. They're, sort, they're just collecting as many bottles and anything that will meet this parameter of being a recyclable plastic. Um, and then they're, they're, they're breaking it down to become a usable component to make another recycled fabric. Um, so if you think about it, nobody knows where any of these things came from or where they were made. They could have been made in a dozen different places um, and been exposed to all kinds of different things. Um, and so that makes sense that perhaps um, you know, so the, these companies that recycle, let's say plastic bottles, that company's not making the plastic bottles. So they can't vouch for every single molecule within that plastic bottle, but our recycled fabric, our recycled insulation, our supplier can do that because they made, they, they, they made the chemistry that made the material that ended up being recycled and turned into our insulation. And that's how they're able to they know exactly what they're dealing with and recycling and turning into our insulation for us. So it's a it's a really interesting thing, and we're really happy about it. And we've been totally happy um, and and um, just really pleased with the performance of the insulation. What makes it great for backpackers is it's kind of this interesting concept of uh, it's just easy to use, uh, and I think a lot of that is like. I don't want to promote or advocate for carelessness, but it almost is just a jacket that you can be a bit careless with in terms of, you know, if you just stuff it in the top of your jacket or, or stuff in the top of your backpack outside of a dry bag, even if it's going to rain, um, you know, a backpacker can have zero worries that if they stuff it in the outside stretch, uh, stretch mesh pocket of their backpack and it starts raining, and it gets rained on for a couple hours while it's sitting in that mesh pocket, they can pull it out and it will immediately provide them warmth. Um, so it's just kind of like a really user-friendly uh, piece. It's really streamlined, it's got a great fit. And uh, yeah, I just think it's really user-friendly and, and very versatile. Um, and that adds to how it's just easy for the user to, for any backpacker to just use uh, pretty much all year long.